It was February 2020. The coronavirus started, and I was sitting in my home, a bit bothered by the expected quarantine and the required adjustments I'll have to do with my life. Not having Thursday evenings with my friends or not hiking as I used to. But there was more into that. I was very curious about this coming epoch that we'll all face. New technologies that we will develop, opportunity to practice new values, solidarity maybe. And what about the art? A new wave of paintings? Then I slapped my own face. You see, I consider myself as a very sensitive person with a high awareness to others' difficulties. And it appears that it took me a couple of days to shift this curiosity of mine into concern for those who are not as privileged as I am. My name is Inav Levy, and I'm a director and a researcher in the field of humanitarian action, migration, resilience, and vulnerable communities. When discussing vulnerable communities, there are some categories that are usually being addressed. People under or over a certain age, socioeconomic status, statelessness, such as when running away from a conflict-stricken country, food security issues, and many more. But on the individual level, who is considered vulnerable? If you are over 70 years old, are you considered vulnerable? What about single mothers or people with limited access to internet? Being vulnerable is not only about your belonging to specific groups within population. It is about how a specific threat affects you. What are the resources you have or do not have to handle it and your perception of such an event? A passing event for one might be a disaster to someone else subject to one's vulnerability. So how do we encounter these vulnerabilities in times of crisis? And more importantly, what can we do about it? Think of a forced migrant who is avoiding reaching out for basic needs because he's afraid of the authorities. Maybe you can think of that woman who generally has limited access to knowledge and resources and this event created a coercive environment for her and then she becomes a victim of gender-based violence. There are things we can do in order to mitigate and reduce the harm. First, ask the right questions, but more importantly, the right people, the most vulnerable ones, and search for them, all of them, not only the ones that are easy to reach. Ask a 12 years old girl where you should put the street lamp above the bus station. She knows better than you where the frightening places are that she will avoid of going to. And if you will not provide her with the right solution, you harm her basic human rights of transportation and safety. Can you think of other people that know better than you what they need? This is called diversity. Embrace it and empower it. Second, not only talk about those vulnerable people without them partnering and leading the process, but also include them in the initial analysis and response. Not as clients or beneficiaries, but rather as partners, owners, and leaders. We call it inclusion. Third, culture. It is not as easy as you may guess, or some of you may already know. Sometimes you do not understand culture or needs if shared with you at all. So one tool you want to use is cultural competence, your competence, or the competence of your organization to develop abilities and to act in a way that will bridge over cultural gaps, to understand people, to be respectful and open to different cultural perspectives. So go on and build this competence. Lastly, the practical standards which will help you understand whether you are in the right direction. You want to use the Sphere Standards Manual Book. This book was developed by a group of humanitarian professionals aiming to improve the quality of humanitarian work during disaster response. With this goal in mind, these professionals frame a humanitarian charter and identify a set of humanitarian standards to be applied in humanitarian response. This well-established, easy to follow, practical and dignifying manual book will assist you in navigating through challenges of health, policy, infrastructure, and many other challenges in light of limited resources and human rights. Can we shift vulnerabilities into resources, shift risks into opportunities? How can we implement dignity 
within our actions? These questions and many more are the aims of humanitarian action. So next time, when you're sitting on your couch, maybe you too will have a better perspective on those who are in real need. Yeah.